Hello and welcome to Two Girls in a Pod. I'm Sharon. I'm Christy. Welcome everybody. You know, as we were doing some steps this morning, you know, Christy, looking through the news, you kind of got an idea for this podcast, which was, was based on what you read. Yeah, I mean, it was talking about scientific breakthroughs and things like that as far as things that help us physically. There's all kinds of advancements that they're making to help with people with blood sugar, you know, just being able to see all of these things, able to hear. Yeah, there's so many advancements that they're making right now. So that's what we were talking about is just about some of the technological advancements. And that's just kind of in the medical field. Right. and well, But we follow solar and water power and just all sorts of innovative ideas that people have. Yeah, there are so many more advancements that they're making as far as just how we do things as a society. You're seeing the whole new thing with emissions. They're trying to make it to where by 2030, there are more EVs on the road, electronic vehicles, so that we're not relying on those fuels and things like that. So, I mean, it's interesting because there are a lot of different perceptions around that and what, how people view that. I know that a lot of people have the idea that it's about trying to make the consumer buy these products and that it stops there. It's about that. And hopefully it's not completely about that. I understand that, you know, people have those concerns, but When you look at it, the overall picture, how much better we will be as a society when we have some of this in place and and we're not being so toxic in how we do things. Well, and I think the thing that's interesting is any time, and, you know, I think this is historical, any time that they would talk about, you know, going to new ideas and new products, whether it was going from the horse and buggy to a car, how that was, that must have been like totally freakishly weird. Then from automobile to flight and people saying that's not possible on and on. And now we have space shuttles and we have, I mean, all sorts of stuff. So when we look at that advancement and the the idea that we hold on to something because we think that we, well, we're comfortable with it for one thing. We're comfortable with it. It's what we know. So a lot of times people are really afraid of those type of advancements. But you think about the first time somebody saw a car or those kinds of things. I mean, it was a, I'm sure a plethora of responses to that. I mean, I don't know what they would say, but I would imagine there were a lot of people that were very skeptical about that or, you know, what was the safety or, or any of those things. Well, even the first time they had radio, like thinking about that alone, you know, here you are in your home and now you have a strange person talking in your home through a box, you know, and then we got the, then, you know, we advanced to a TV where it was like, oh my God, now I can see those people. That had to be. Video killed the radio star. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, it's like a whole new thing that people, you have to get used to the idea, but I think that it's really worth looking at because there are so many things that we can do that we can do them better. Well, and I think there's a little bit of a difference between, you know, we went from radio to television or things like that. But I think when we talk about going from fossil fuel to the EV stuff, there's a history very much entrenched in that of, you know, working in the fossil fuel industry, the pipelines and all that. And people say, well, that employs people. Well, you know what? Every job employs people, but the thing is, is with technology, it's about how do we help people move with technology? Our great friend and and, uh, one of uh, the other therapists, Kathy Weber, her thing going to telehealth was really, or even the electronic age. She's been doing this for over 30 years. So she's got, you know, you get very used to it. And I remember even for me, you know, going from writing Blue Note, we called it the Blue Note because we wrote all of our notes out. And then they came to us and said, we're going to medical records, you know, electronic records. And we're all, they're like, oh my God. And, you know, a lot of people dug their heels in and, oh my, we can't do this. This is and all this. And part of it was a, a fear. It's it's an unknown. And I remember that going, even that, going from that technology to medical electronic records. And that's the thing. It can seem like such an inconvenience because you have to learn a new skill. But really, when you look at the bigger picture, I really think that it benefits so many people. And it is important to teach those skills to those people so that people don't get left behind. Well, 
and I even think like with Kathy, because it was such a new thing, but you know, she would ask questions, you helped her out a lot, those kind of things. And then going to telehealth, that was another thing. How do you do telehealth with people? How do you have that connection? And the truth is, is that you can be just as effective with telehealth as you can in person because it's about the relationship. But that has been, for some clinicians, a hard transition. And I mean, even for me, I've done telehealth for a while, but you know, going to complete telehealth was really different. Working from home when you were used to going to an office, all of these are advancements, but with it comes that feeling of, I don't know, is, are we afraid of leaving something behind that has value? I don't know. Well, I think that we are. And I think that a lot of people, like I say, it's because it's the unknown. They don't understand what's going to happen if we take away the cashiers. Like, I mean, I went through that whole process of like, she did. I don't understand. Why would we go to self-checkout? That's taking jobs from people. But I have come to understand that now when you don't have somebody that has to do those lower paying jobs, you're able to teach them skills that they can get paid more doing things that it's more about people's worth and making things better for everybody. It's not about taking away something. Well, and then, you know, you have to have the people who maintain those machines, who develop those machines. So there's all, I think, the behind the scenes stuff that we forget. Everything from, you know, with car manufacturing to all the different stuff. And people will say, you know what, we need the pipelines, we need the oil. And I have a different opinion about that. The whole thing was standing rock and people would say, well, they just need to let us do this. Why are they being this way? And, you know, I told the person, I says, how about next week, we just have somebody come and they're going to start digging in the backyard. They're, They're like, well, they can't do that. And I says, well, that is the Native American backyard. So when we don't have a conscious awareness to what we are doing to other people, Mm -hmm. So when even we don't have a conscious awareness to advancements and how advancements help other people, because we get so entrenched in these ideas and these ideals, and it's how do we overcome them? The cashier thing was a big one for you. Yeah. It was like, no, this is wrong. And then starting to see that shift, because we love technology. Some of it's kind of strange and beyond our comprehension with some of it. But the advancements in medical, you know, this is going to help somebody. And I get it. You know, the flip side of that is, is, you know, what is the pharmaceutical industries doing? And I get it, you know, big business and that. And there is some of that. But a lot of the the technologies are not about big business. Yeah, I think that it's about improving the way that we do things overall for everybody. And yes, I know at times it looks like we're taking away, like I said, jobs for people or whatever. Over time, I think that people will realize people are able to do more and it's not about just doing these low wage jobs where that they're not making enough, you know, to make ends meet. So I feel like that there are so many of these advancements that that do help us. And I do understand that it can be really scary at times, too. I mean, that doesn't mean that every advancement that we make is to the benefit of the people. I understand that as well. I mean... There's a lot of like the non-GMO thing and that there's genetically modified organisms. For me, that's not, you know, I feel like that that was something that people that they did to start making bigger, better, longer shelf life. Exactly. More of it. It was about quantity and not quality. Well, and I agree. And I think when you do stuff like that, I think when you don't take the time to do the really good studies on it. And to really look at what is that doing? How is that impacting? You know, we know stuff is happening. And is it evolution? Maybe. But are we pushing evolution? Maybe. When we see that females are developing faster, males are developing faster, all of those things, you know, where is that coming from? We're adding stuff to everything that we eat. And so take the time to do those objective studies on it and say, to see the benefit of it and that, and I, you know me, I'm weird, many things, but when somebody says something to me, I go research and I don't, I look at who's funding this study. I see how many independent and I see what is that skewing towards and why is it skewing towards it? Where's I follow the money. Exactly. And I think that's really, really important when you are educating yourself about these things, because yes, like I said, not all of it is a positive. And I understand that some of it is 
very frightening. There's a group, it's called the transhumanism movement. They are using different technologies that they're implanting in the body to get the body to do different things like, say, operate your phone or things like that. Things like that to me, I mean, that just sounds a little bit crazy, but you know, (laughs) I mean, I understand medical advancements where, you know, it helps somebody who's impaired in some way. And I think that's amazing, but I also find it really frightening to think about, like I said, the whole agenda of the transhumanism thing. I don't know how that fits in, but it's definitely something that needs to be researched more. Well, and I think too, you know, when we talk about that, are, is some of technology scary in some different ways? You know, when we, they first started doing cloning and stuff, I think that there's that humanistic piece to it too about, is that okay? You know, the other thing is, is, you know, if they sit there and they start being able to remove things and change things is, you know, children, uh, babies are in the embryo and all that stuff. Then what happens when they decide, well, we don't want any brown eyed people. So we're going to make them all blue eyed or those, I think, become the fear of people yeah. or, you know, we need more men than we males than we do females and all that other stuff that goes on with tech. I think that's a lot that fear stems from a lot of that of where does it become too much? Who's in control of it? And is it going to shift things to somebody else's power and things like that. I think that is a really big thing too. Mm -hmm. And that is scary when you think about that. You know, I know they're doing a lot of stuff, you know, and I get it when they're able to save babies and and save people with this modern technology, you know, and, and when you can be in another country and operate on somebody else in another country, that's fantastic because that's about life-saving stuff. Right. But when it says something about changing or altering DNA in your chromosomes or all of that stuff, then it gets a little bit interesting. There's the argument too, even with fertility, you know, that people are using fertility and then they're having six, seven, eight babies. Is a woman's body really meant to handle six, seven, eight babies? Usually no. That's why, you know, when we look in nature, it just doesn't happen. And so there's that argument too. Well, what are we doing to the woman's body? And, you know, how do we control this or all of those things that come with that? There's arguments on both sides of every new technology. Yeah. But the thing is, is having the ability to, to sit down, listen to it. And also if it's really creating a strong emotional response in you, then ask yourself, where does that come from? What is driving that strong emotional response Mm -hmm. or feeling? And if it's fear, definitely you need to research research more about it. And that's the thing with any of it. I feel, feel like it's so important to educate yourself about it. And like you say, follow the money. You can see who's sponsoring these things and to be able to determine, is this something that's being done for profit and it's not to the good of humankind, I think. But there's also a lot of advancements that I think are. And people have to really look at that, but it's definitely having an impact on our society. The new medical advancements are really, they're amazing right now. Just all of the things that they're figuring out to really help people with diseases that we've had for a long time. And I think it's with anything, sometimes it's that longitudinal thing that we see that we, you know, when we first put out, you know, stuff that we feel is going to be beneficial for the environment or for people And then you develop it, you look at it. And sometimes you can't do that long-term study right away. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as soon as you see that that is having a negative impact, how do you modify it? How do you change it? And hopefully what they're doing is they're continuously looking at that and saying, okay, if this goes wrong or if this goes wrong or what might go wrong and how do we change that and how do we uh, make it happen? Because we know right now, and I don't care whether you believe in global warming or you don't, it's not about that. It's about look at what is happening. It's not about a belief. To me, when we see these, the ice break, the ice shelves breaking off at the rate they are, when we see the polar bears now not having the ability to hunt and do the things because they don't have the ice to help them, all, you know, we're seeing all these changes happening. We have more fires right now. Europe has fires. Mm-hmm. We had the big fire in Australia. We've had the fires here. You know, we've had fires here in Colorado. We are so dry. This is not 
a natural progression, I don't think, because when we look at it historically, I don't see that. And based on, you know, once again, I go look at a lot of different stuff. But it's not to say it's not to sit here and have this debate about what causes the global warming or that the thing is, is it's here. How do we deal with it? How do we what do we do? What is our contribution? How do we minimize the impact that we're having? And they do know that a lot of the stuff that we've been doing is it is impacting our climate. I mean, And so, I mean, I just feel like that it's worth looking at these things and understanding that even though some of the changes are scary, they can be maybe to our our benefit. I know travel is really important to us. And I just saw like yesterday that by 2029, United is going to have this new super power jet it's like turbo or something and i don't know how fast it gets you to europe but i guess it goes pretty fast so i mean in my mind i'm like oh wow that is so cool it's not gonna take so long to get there but then there's also that part of me that's like man i hope they have that technology all down and in place (laughs) well absolutely you know even one of the things we talk about here a lot where we live is they're talking about doing a like a light rail or a train from And, you know, there's a lot of people opposed to it. Well, no, then it's going to impact the roads. Every argument you can think of, there is for it. And I get that. You know, I don't know if anybody's driven to or from Denver, from Colorado Springs during rush hour, and particularly on a Friday, it's a nightmare. It's funny, half of Colorado's rushing to get to Denver on Friday afternoon, and the other half that live in Denver are trying to get out of Denver (laughs) on the weekend. And it's very congested and... And we're nothing compared to when you look at Los Angeles, the bigger cities that have even more traffic than we do. And to me, in my mind, I really think that, you know, the light rail, it will benefit. There won't be as much traffic on the road and that. And, and, you know, it's easier for people. And I feel like that's something that Europe has done for a long time. Their train system, you know, how much they use that. Not everybody has cars and that. And I don't think that's such a bad thing. It seems like a lot of them really like using the train system. So, and, and the thing is, that was really interesting. For us, it was such a foreign thing that there was anxiety for us. Yeah, when so, we went. Yes. Yeah, there was anxiety because, you know, everybody else is just going on and they're, and they're all calm. And, you know, here Sandra, Christy, and I are, oh, my God, where's the train? What do you mean we're supposed to be in line? No, we didn't know that was supposed to happen. Oh, we got to go get more tickets. It was chaotic. Or I should say it felt chaotic. We couldn't figure out what train to get on. Then this guy helped us, got us on the train, and we're sitting on the train. We, we're we good. And then we see him come in. The train goes, no, 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 you're on the wrong train. That's going to take you. I don't know where he said. So we get off, and he takes us to the right train. So thank God for this guy, or we would have been in some country we didn't know was on our agenda. <laughs> that we didn't intend to be. But for them, it's their true mode of transportation. And bicycles. Oh, yeah. Which promotes a healthier society as well, you know? So I feel like that all of these things are worth looking at. They are. And once again, even with that, it caused such anxiety. But then once we got on the train and you realize how they have a really great system there. They do. But for us, I mean, the next time we go, we'll probably have a little less anxiety. Probably not knowing, you know, we won't be at zero anxiety with it. Just because the language and all of that. But... I think that even those things and seeing how that technology works there was kind of interesting for us. It's eye-opening. And, you know, it was that, that's a perfect example, I feel like, because it was something we didn't know. We were a little leery about using it. Once we got there, we realized how, what a benefit it is and just how easy it is. I mean, as you get used to it, you know, I mean, I think by the end of the trip, we were a little bit better about it so I can see them having it there for all these years have you know it's probably something they all really appreciate yeah because by the time we were going from Brussels to back to London we knew what we were doing (laughs) right but that was our last train ride but yeah it's just very different you know and once again it's just different Mm -hmm. even here I and I get it we uh, humans for whatever reason we struggle with change We struggle with differences and, you know, we get so caught up in the argument that we don't stop. And, you know, we always, 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 always communicate, communicate, active listening, those kind of things, because 
our way does not have to be the right way. Sometimes it's how do we meet in the middle with it. And I think that we see so much right now. There is such a d- division of people's beliefs on so many things, whether it's from the oil to going more green, you know, so you have just way over from the abortion to pro-choice, LBGTQ rights, plus rights to more of the conservative, what they believe that should be marijuana on one side, legalization of it, legalization of all drugs. I mean, there's such a dichotomy, but even the thing of modern technology, should we be doing that? The big thing with 5G, yeah. There was so much against 5G. And guess what? As much against it as it is, guess what? We're dealing with 5G. <laughs> right. And it is one of those things of, even if you don't like it, things are going to evolve, whether regardless of our personal opinion about it. Mm-hmm. And do we keep digging our heels in or do we educate ourselves about it? Do we go and have conversations with those people who have differing opinions and get some different ideas And why do you believe this way? Mm -hmm. You know, there are some people who still won't fly because they don't believe in the technology. (laughs) Right. Well, what keeps that up in the air? Well, I don't know the science of it. (laughs) And that's what I mean. I think that as a society, we can't, you know, if we don't have these type of advancements, we can, you know, become stagnant. And we have to continue to look at things that help us to move forward. But we also have to do it in a way that people are being taken care of, I feel like. And on top of that, we have to be doing these things in a more respectful way. Right. Because people are getting to that place where it becomes attacking if somebody has a differing idea about whatever that is, and particularly around technology, you know, whether it's stem cell research, a lot of people are very much against that. Even with stem cell, you know, when it first came out, people were so staunch about, no, no. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. You know, fast forward, more and more people are using the stem cell stuff. And so it's kind of cool. And we look at some really interesting uh, technology like the exoskeleton for people to who do not have the ability to walk. That feeling they must have the first time they put on an exoskeleton and they're walking, they're upright again. Mm -hmm. I mean, how amazing is that? And I don't know if there's a lot of people who sit there and say, you know, I don't think we should have the exoskeleton. Well, I don't know. There and there may be, I know that they've been using that, I guess, for quite some time in military. And, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, obviously we benefit. But I do think there's a lot of people that probably question that as well. And then especially if you take it one step further, like I said, there's so many things that they're doing now where it's actually implanted in the body. And they talk about, I don't know how many people are, Trekkie fans, but you know, they talk about I am Borg being part human and part machine. And we're kind of already in that class in some ways by the the very fact that we have my mom has a bionic knee, you know, that she when she had the knee knee replacement. So now, all titan- it's whatever the metal is. So titanium. basically is, that is it. Pacemakers. You know, we have those things already that is happening, but I think it's, you know, is it gonna be more to the degree for the hearing for the kids, you know, that's an implant that helps them to be able to hear, Mm -hmm. you know, so we look at those things, you know, I can't see a lot of people saying, oh my gosh, I don't think we should do that. So it's almost like we have a different thing when it comes to certain pieces of medical versus it, does it go against a religious belief or political belief or a belief system anyway, Mm -hmm. you know, that will, will have more of that dig your heels in and argue a point. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me how people pick and choose. I mean, it's interesting how we pick and choose. (laughs) Well, exactly. I mean, I feel like I get excited about the medical advancements that they're making to help people overcome different obstacles. I can get excited about that and, and I'm happy about it. But I know that, like I said, when I was talking about the transhumanism, to me, it goes into a different thing when it's about implanting things to... I don't know, like just for convenience, um, convenience. Yeah. It's not about a a medical thing or, or something like that. It's a a stretch of my imagination to try and, and think that way. I just really, I have to look at that some more. What's interesting is you know, my nephew comes here and, you know, we have our TV and 
he'll go hook up the TV to his phone. And I'm there thinking, dude, there is a remote right next to you. Yeah. But it's like this idea of technology. And I'm, I'm just there like, it went, do you want me? No, I don't want it on my phone. I barely do the things on my phone. And it's not that I'm against technology. And you know, one of the other things, you know, we always talk about that freaky thing and y'all know it, that we're, you'll be sitting there and we'll be talking about something. Oh, you know, the newest Nike. And then all of a sudden the next thing you see, it's all about Nike. And, and people, they're like, I don't want them to do this because they're, they're going to listen to, they're already listening. <laughs> yeah. It shows up on your phone as an advertisement after you've spoken to someone about something. It's true. I mean, and that's something that's outside of you. But where I go I'm in my mind when I think about, you know, them putting something inside my body to do that. And I, I get it. There is all kinds of, like I said, even in the medical world where that they have now they're talking about little robots that can go in. Nan and uh, nanos. Nanos, yeah, that can go in and actually do the surgeries and things that you need to. And, you know, doesn't that just sound like something from Transformers or something? I don't know. Something from very some sci-fi. Movie. Yeah, very sci-fi. And, I mean, I, even with that, it's still a medical thing. But when it comes to, like I said, you know, being able to, to control my phone with my mind, I don't know. That's just way outside of me. And this is... <laughs> We don't have Alexa. We don't have a Google. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason why is why. I don't want them listening to me. (laughs) I know they're listening on my phone, but I don't want them talking to me. (laughs) (laughs) The other thing that, that you're pretty staunch about is. I don't know what. Cameras. Cameras. Yeah. I don't like cameras. I like cameras if I'm on the backside running it, but I don't want I don't know. It's like having cameras in your house and stuff like that. I mean, I've I've heard so many stories about, you know, people, they they have cameras in their house and their kid says, you know, somebody's talking to me and we don't know who it is. And I'm like, wow, you know, it just gives people one more thing that they can hack and be inside your home. That's what I feel like. That's the interesting thing about technology, too, is that remembering that whoever creates it, there's always somebody smarter. Mm hmm. When we look at how many hacks and how many, oh my Lord, your phones get hacked. We hear about, you know, Target gets hacked. And so they're calling and saying, hey, we were hacked or that's through technology. And these are people who are technologically smarter. There are those things. Now, is it widespread? No. Tapping into the ring and all of that. Is it widespread? No. But the few times that it has happened, sometimes it can have an adverse effect. And so I can understand having that concern. So then it becomes, let's do some research. Let's see how often is it happening. You know, if it's happened 10 times out of people have 30 million people having it, those it's, it's minuscule. Yeah, I still don't want them in my home. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I can... So yeah, let's just tell everybody now that we have no security <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Our neighbors do. <laughs> our neighbors watch it. Our, our neighbors on all sides have security and cameras and half of them face us. So we're good. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. But it is. And, and I understand. I understand your feeling on that. I really do. But I think it's one of those things, too, that as the age of technology. And I think the other thing is, too, is we're not the type of people. And a lot of times when things get hacked or things like that. People are getting into things and doing stuff. And oftentimes, you know, when I'm talking to the people I know who do a lot of the electronic stuff, it'll be things that people are downloading and all of that that's allowing them to come in on the backside and and mess with their phones and mess with their stuff. You and I are not those people. Mm -mm. We are not those people. And I'm even less of that people than you are because, you know, when I look at, I told her the other day, okay, just so you know, our one laptop is 10 years old. No, it's 12 years old now. But that's the one I use my electronic medical records on because my other laptop, I do my actual telehealth. So I have both open. That poor 12-year-old computer and that laptop, I love it. Thank you. It's still working. But I looked at her, th- her when you open it, there's like almost the whole screen is taken up with little things. What, I don't even know what those things are called. The but little icons? Icons, the, thank you. On the desktop? <laughs> You're so technologically Now she's just being a smart ass. (laughs) But yeah, 
she'll have all those. And so you did kind of go and clean it up and she started taking stuff off. And now instead my computer doesn't go. Oh yeah. Now it only goes. <laughs> it really did help it. But even that stuff, it's really not stuff that you download and things like that. But you know, you do get that, you know, even the one day you just opened the computer and we're trying to work and we got a virus and there was nothing we could do. We, it took, cost us $130 to get the stupid virus off of the computer. Mm-hmm. And that guy was, and the guy who was doing the thing, he was talking to us about that, about how they infiltrate that, you know, and, and we're very careful about that stuff. On my work computers, I don't do anything else that is strictly work. I don't go look at things. I don't, nothing, because I want that to be as secure as I can possibly make it. Right. And we have all the anti, you know, the guard stuff for it. But it's those things that people start when there's technology, they get this idea, oh, well, I'm going to go explore it. I'm going to go do this. And then once again, I always tell people, remember, there's always somebody out there who's smarter than we are in every area. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Just go and try to understand, you know, the whole new crypto thing and the blockchain technology and all of that and and read some of those articles. And it's like, okay. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And the pictures the oh yeah nfts and all nfts that good stuff. when they talk about new technology christina will say oh okay we're gonna go check out this new te- oh my goodness it's crazy we making. love to read about all those things but we yeah. do we try to keep them on technology some of it scares us mm-hmm. you know and some of it scares us because we don't really understand it right and some of it scares us because what does that really mean you know, I think people, you know, when we talk about AI, the artificial intelligence, you know, and they have the one that they made and, you know, now she is a sentient being. I was trying to remember who, what country allowed her, yeah, is Saudi remember. Arabia or I can't remember, anyway, whatever country. That's very different because what does that mean? It always reminds me of that episode of the Golden Girls where they make this pack when they die, you know, and all this and that they're going to freeze their... Heads. Their heads, you know, because, no, they're going to freeze their bodies. But then, you know, in the end, what it is, you got an old head on a new body. (laughs) It's like, is that what it's going to be like? Are they going to (laughs) just transplant? And and I was reading the technology because it was on brain and how they were trying to figure out memory of people and how thinly they were slicing the brain to see about, you know, basically storing memory and that into a computer and things like that and that kind of blows my mind just a little bit because i think to myself well this is my memory and you know if you trans put it into something else does how does that change that Mm -hmm. so i think there's all kinds of stuff out there that's just kind of scary and Mm -hmm. i don't understand it and you know and there's some stuff that you know in technology about you know i mean we have solar panels which that we I'm, I'm hoping the sun, we've got to have the sun. If the sun's gone, we're gone. <laughs> right. So our solar panels, to me, are a good investment because I'm, I do believe daily that the sun's going to come out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great outlook. <laughs> Even those little things, I mean, it's so hard. Even for me, you know, I can't stand the freaking weeds in my yard, but I also can't bring myself to really use Roundup, no disrespect to Roundup, but the oh, chemicals in it and all of that, the pesticides. Now, that, especially now that we got our new little baby, we can't be giving her some bad stuff. So those are the things, even if it's stuff like that. So I'm there thinking now, how do you make that homemade stuff? Right. <laughs> and we do a lot of holistic stuff. Yeah. And if you all haven't noticed when we talk, there's, a, you know, we try to be as healthy and we have, try to be as aware and conscious of things as we can. You have to take care of the bees, all those good things. Unless, of course, they're attacking us, in which case. And this is even what I tell Christy. If there's stuff outside, bugs, insects, I'm okay. You do not get to come into my home. As soon as you come into my home, your life is over. (laughs) But if you're out in your environment, go for it. Yeah. I didn't know this, you know. So we have uh, little garden snakes in here. and We were out doing the yard one day, and there was a snake. Well, I just kind of shoved it into the neighbor's yard. Well, I just found out he's terrified of snakes. <laughs> I was like, oops. <laughs> I wasn't going to kill it. I don't want to kill things or things like that unless, of course, they come into my house. So I, that's fair warning for any insect, anything, my anything. It's not going to happen. If they're in the house, all bets are off. Not to mention the fact that Christy is, that's her phobia is... Bugs. Bugs. 
And let me tell you, when there's a bug, I know it. <laughs> I don't care what I'm doing. I don't care if I'm in the middle of a session. We're all going to know that there's a bug. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. I think the most important thing to realize is that we do our part and how we make those decisions to do our part. And some people who might be totally against, who might be, oh, we got to continue to do, do oil and, and all these things, on the other side may say, you know what, I'm not going to use any plastics. So it's a balancing. So it, 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 isn't, it doesn't have to be extremes. Mm -hmm. I think if we're all doing something, you know, and if you believe in oil drilling, yay. But if you're doing plastics and, and you know, not using straws or whatever, double yay. This is what we found out was interesting. In Mexico, they don't put things in styrofoam. If you have leftovers, you take uh, your container to the restaurant and they put it in your container. Mm -hmm. So it's reusable. Mm -hmm. They don't give you straws, only if you ask for them. And even then, they, they, you just don't have straws. Those are the things. But of course, oh, the places we're talking about are right by the ocean. So they, they're trying to keep... They're trying to minimize that impact because you can see it there. They know. They're aware. And I think that's what it is. We all have to have that awareness. And, and that's where it comes in with the technology and all of that. I think that we just have to educate ourselves about it. And like I said, if it's for about taking care of our people, of our environment, our planet... How can that be a bad thing? I think that, like I said, there are some things that some advances that they do and it's about a profit and that. So like I say, it's it's not always a positive, but it's definitely something that we have to look at and consider. Well, and I don't think we can do those blanket statements. I don't think we can sit there and say the pharmaceutical industry is 100% evil because there have been advancements in the pharmaceutical industry that have saved people's lives, whether it's from a heart attack, whatever those things are, keeping people from having another stroke, all of those things. And people will say, well, you can do that in nature. In some instances, it's not going to be fast enough. And I think a life worth saving matters. Now, do I think that they're a little bit corrupt? Absolutely. Do I think that we should have our medication for diabetics to be astronomically high? Absolutely not. To me, that is doing something for profit because we have so many diabetics in the United States. And that's the thing. It becomes more greed. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at that, if you say have 50 million people with diabetes, just say 50 million, and say you charge them even $10, 50 million times 10, they're already making a profit because Trust me, people, it doesn't cost them that much to make these medications. Sometimes they're making them for pennies mm -hmm. and they're turning around. But see, what happens, though, is people see that and then they, they make it all evil. And if you make something all evil, even if there's those people who are really working to for the advancement and the betterment of, of humanity, those people who think it's 100% evil will not see all those other people. And there are a lot of people out there working really hard in all of these areas we're talking about. These are their ideas. This is what they're envisioning. And a lot of times they're envisioning it for a better life for people, whether it's for people, the planet, animals, whatever that is, our advancements into space. So when we sit there and do that blanket statement, like it's a bad thing, it's evil, they're out for this, we're minimizing those visions of those people who are working and their only thing is the vision is creating something that they think is going to be for the betterment of others. So we have to remember when we do those things. One of my clients is a chemist, and she talks about that, about the thing of being able to come up with stuff that's going to help people. She's not part of the pharmaceutical industry. Though she goes and creates something, she becomes a part of that industry, whether it's the big pharma or a littler pharma, because if you want your product to get out to the people that need it, and yes, is it controlled? Is it mandated and all that? Absolutely. And so does it make it harder for people to believe in it and think, hey, this is a good thing? Yes. But when we become extreme in our thinking, that's when we have the problems. That's when we have all this angry talk. This is when we dig in our heels. And this is when we're not open to the fact that there are multiple facets to all of these things. 
Well, especially for where we are in our society, because there is such a need for so many different things. We're we're dealing with so many illnesses and things like that. And I feel like that we're kind of working in arrears on the backside, you know, of things trying to take care of stuff that a lot of times we create with stuff that we do in our society. Absolutely. So that's why I think, you know, that we do, we need to look ahead and see how we can do things differently. And I get what you're saying because there are a lot of people that go into that industry with their heart in the right place, wanting to make advancements for people to have better lives. But I also, like I say, I feel like that all of that is having to happen because of the stuff we didn't do to set it up right to begin with. Well, you know, even when we look at even taking teachers, teachers go oftentimes, I can't imagine why anybody would go into teaching without loving it. I really don't because it's not for the money. But, you know, you go into teaching and, and you love it and you, you want to do that creative stuff. But then you get the schools, the districts, the you know school boards and all of the state who sit there and say, no, now we're going to teach this way. So it's taking away of that a lot of that creative process of the teacher and how they teach and engage and stuff like that. So, you know, there's this mad exodus of teachers, too, which is really, really sad because we need to educate the kids. But it's a creation. It's with health. If, you know, people sit there and say, I'm going to go and just eat crap and do all these things, you know, drink as much as I can, eat crap and not exercise and do all this. And, you know, maybe when I'm 40, I'm going to change. Now you've got to go reverse everything you did up to 40. Yeah. But at that time, you're going to need Western medicine to be able to come in and help you <laughs> so, <laughs> rectify all that. <laughs> exactly. And I think that those are the things. It's being aware. It's really listening, learning, and, and in that extreme thinking. Remember, in our extreme thinking, things are not as black and white as that. Right. And it's always being able to move and look at the great in that as well. So there's always going to be anxiety around those things. But one of the things is, is I guess today we're talking about, even for us, the importance of educating ourselves so that we don't have that level of fear and then educating ourselves. And then we make a decision. And sometimes we're still going to decide the way we do, or sometimes maybe we'll decide something different, but it's not about changing other people. It, people, anytime you think you're going to change somebody's opinion, good luck with that, especially on certain things, because it's a history of that belief system. And sometimes it's generational and it's not going to change that way. So being kind, listening, engaging, learning, understanding that technology is here. And what are we going to do? Are we going to be along for the ride? Some of it, yes, for us. Some of it, maybe not so much. <laughs> but being able to pick and choose it, but doing it in, in a way that you educate yourself so that you don't have that fear factor with it. And talking about it. And talking about it with people who have different opinions. And not being so staunch in yours that you cannot hear somebody else. They have the reasons for their stuff. You have the reasons for yours. So as always, our thing is the biggest thing is communicate, communicate, communicate. And at the end of the day, respect. Respect that other people have different opinions than you. And be okay with it. We don't all have to think alike what a boring world this would be. Right. And now, you know, we got a little bit of a late start. And now I'm going to have my clients probably already on because, you know, we have I don't know what we were doing this morning. Anyway, once again, as always, extreme gratitude for every one of you that listens to us and follows us. And, you know, we are so grateful for it. Have a wonderful week. Yes. And we will be back next week. Bye. Bye.